Hello and welcome to Stream Tabulous. So I had a video on One Trainer on how to install it and a quick overview, which I recommend that you go check out and take a look at it. This video I have created adjacent, so a configuration to getting One Trainer uh, to render myself a SDXL model, and I'm actually very happy with it. Um, over the moon. It's not quite fine tuned yet. I've still got a lot to learn. Uh, but it will get you guys started and uh, we'll go over to the intro and then we'll talk about it more. But before we do, there's something you need to know. This is for RTX graphics card users. And the model was trained using RTX 3060, 8 gig. Was it fast? Certainly not. Was it slow? Well, it could have been a lot slower. Uh, and we'll talk about that after the intro. Okay, so here we are in one trainer. Now up the top here, we have the drop downs and we have my settings here. It's both the same. I just backed them up at uh, intervals to make sure that I had two copies in case one bugged up as when I was making small changes. These are pretty much just these with a couple of little minor changes, but nothing major. Now I will upload that to uh, my uh, cloud. Where to put it? Come into your wherever you put your one trainer. Go into training presets, drop it in there. I'll make it nice and quick for you. So you're probably wondering, well, if it's the same as this here, why would I use it? Well, simply because you can just create these folders quickly and easily and uh, just rename that. So whatever you've got hard drive space on, so you can create workspace, a folder in there could run and just change that to C and so forth, just to make things nice and quick and easy. Uh, model. Now you can use it with uh, custom models, which generally people say they get a better uh, image with. Uh, but I've gone with the SDXL base model because, of course, I was having those um, errors of the same image over and over and over again, and I needed to rule out things as a part of the testing. So I did use the SDXL base model, but you should be able to use um, any model that you want. Um, obviously, as long as it's an SDXL, not something like uh, a pony, which would be different settings, which uh, people are creating. And uh, now we don't need the VAE and we have the output directory there. We talked about all this in the previous video, so we won't really have to go into it. So... If you're wondering what a lot of this stuff is, you can go watch the previous video. Concepts. I created one. I called it me, as I talked about in the previous video as well. What's changed here? Coming down to this part here, the repeats. I have, as I discussed in the previous video, um, this, how do I put it? You have your image. You have 12 images. So it's only going to read each of those images once and then it's done for the um, steps and it kicks out the epochs and it kicks out the LoRa. So it doesn't matter how many epochs you go for, it's only reading those once. The more it reads the image, the better it understands it. So how do I put that in layman's terms? Kind of like when you're, um, if any of you ever did art, Maybe you didn't do art, but at some point you're a kid and you're drawing or a teen and you're drawing and you have the image here and you have your paper here and you're looking and you're drawing it down. So AI isn't the way you think it is. When you're doing AI image generation, that is not using AI. It's the learning process that uses AI. So the AI takes my image, it destroys it, and then it tries to draw it. Then it brings back the image from its data set. It looks at it and goes, okay, that's nothing like it. Destroy it again, redraw it. And it keeps doing this process over and over until it gets a close likeness. We say close likeness because it's never going to be perfect. So if it's only looking at it once and destroying it once, it's either going to be complete mess, 
well, it's going to be just garbage. You want it to do that image a few times. So when we've only got 12 images for it to look at, we need to add repeats in there so it looks at it more. So at 50, it's 137 repeats on 12 images. There's no correlation. It'd be nicer if I could just type in, you know, I want to look at all these images 137 times. So, yeah. But... 50 was the sweet spot. I think 137 was a little bit overkill. It was taking one hour because the CUDEN issue that I'm having where it's not using the uh, CUDA of the graphics card, so it's using CC++, which means it's using my CPU and it's using me, um, my RAM, which is why my, uh, my LoRa training took a long time. We'll get into that in a moment. So you need to find a balance there for uh, what's going to work best with you with your images. You really do want around about a uh, hundred. So I'd probably drop that down to forty, and I'd hope that's around a hundred. Maybe increase it a little bit, and um, you know I would check those um, the image generations. So we talked about this more previously. I did turn off these. Um, all my images are close up, which heavily affected the uh, Laura that I created, as in only doing close up images. Um, that if it was more distance, it didn't look like me. If it was too close, it didn't look like me. So keep that in mind. Um, this was just me grabbing some oversaturated images just to do a test. And we can see, you know, I've got some without glasses, which is a big thing that you want to do but some of these you know they're just washed out and these aren't very good for a training data set but this is me trying to work out okay why isn't this working at all it was coming through to the training pretty much default this needs to be on so that's pretty much all i can really uh, say about that uh this is adam west is a vram memory hog so of course this is going to be a part of the problem with it leaching over to the system memory and that's something important to know this will use your system ram if there's not enough ram of the graphics card so it's not going to kick out an error and go can't create it ran out of ram you know i'm done instead it's going to continue to do it it's just going to be slower so that's a benefit because uh most people that train lawyers they're doing larger data sets and they're kicking them out in a couple of hours. And for the most, uh, they're doing a uh, hundred images in 30 minutes. Probably hundred to 200 epoxes. So hundred images, hundred to 200 epoxes in 30 minutes. They've got 24 gig plus 40 90s. That's unrealistic. And they're like, well, okay, do an SD 1.5 because uh, you're not going to be able to do it. Well, no, I can do it. It's just going to take longer. I'm quite fine if I go out for the day and have it run for 10 hours if I get something usable or longer. Or go to bed and wake up in the morning and have something. That works for me. I think that's fantastic. So what can we talk about it? 100 epoxes was going to take me 100 hours. Because uh, for some reason, the Kuden's not working. Because that's, you've got to have the right version of Python to the right CUDA toolkit. And if they're not compatible, then this doesn't use the Kuden. And then it defaults to your system RAM. And that's why I'm running into this long-winded run times. But it's working. And I think that's the important part. So hopefully I'll sort that out and I'll get it faster. So I'm going to keep working on this. So this will get you started at least. And then you guys can uh, play with it as well. And you can leave, of course, in the comments below feedback on it. What would I change on this? So I ended up doing a backup and kicked out Alora um, at four epoxes. So four hours. And at the five hour mark so it read that um image 136 times 136 times 136 times 136 times 136 times each time it did it one epox one epox one epox one epox one epox 
and I saved it at the three, uh, sorry, the four and five mark for Alora. So I only ran for five hours, which is five epoxes. So if you wanted to just do one for five hours for a test, you could do that. Or you could set it up for 10 and go to bed, wake up in the morning and have your Laura trained and take a look at it. So these settings, I'm going to upload at 10 epochs. Batch size, lower the batch size, the faster it runs. Uh, a lot of people that train, they only have a batch size of one, but they're training with a thousand images. So for us, I find that you want a, leave it at the default of four for the batch size. It does mean this plays heavily on how long it takes to train the LoRa as well. So the higher the number, the more hours it's going to take. So you could cut that back and do a test. And I will be doing that on probably two and see what that looks like. I might even try one at um, 10 epoxes. Now, I know with all the ones that I was using, everyone said batch size one, batch size one. And that might have been the cause of it not um, generating the um, or making changes to the image. So I went for the cleanest approach to test it. I reinstalled Python, I reinstalled CUDA, and then I did a git pull on this and reinstalled this. I didn't do any updates. Previously, I did updates. This one was unupdated. And then I went through and did all this. So keep that in mind. Uh, and this is how it will be when you guys get it off my cloud. It will be on 10 and 4. So if you're running the same system as I am, and if you end up having the CUDA errors, you will get 10 hours. Now, if you're not getting the CUDA error, I would love a comment below to know what Python you're running and what CUDA toolkit you're running. Or did you get the Kuden error and did you do something in the command line to fix it? I'd love to know that as well. So anything on how you fixed it, or if you don't get it, those two things. So we'll come over to sampling. You'll have to change this to your prompt. Now we talked about this in the previous video. So what we've got is every time it does its sample, so 136, I'm kicking out one epoch, it's gonna generate one JPEG image. and only one JPEG image. So it's hard to, you might get a bad render. It does happen. So if we kicked out multiples, we might get better renders. And that's something to keep in mind. So when you're going through and you're like um, trying to cherry pick those backups and you're like, okay, one's horrible, two's horrible, pretty much guaranteed they're always going to be bad. Three is all right, four is horrible. But four might actually be better. It's only that one render that it's kicked out, which is horrible. So keep that in mind. But um, this will give you an idea of how it's working. And we'll go over and look at some images in a minute to explain that a bit better. Backups. So we're going to change this. And we're going to put two. And that's what it's going to be configured for for you guys on the cloud to download. So number one, number two is going to back up. You're not going to be using number two. It's going to be horrible. Number three is not going to back up. Number four, it's going to back up. That backup is going to have a LoRa file in it, which you can use. Number five won't. Number six will. So what we get is two, four, six, eight, ten. We'll end up with five LoRa uh, files in the backup. And you can go through and look at the images and you can select which one looks the best, or you can try them all and find out, um, you know, what's going to work best for you. So keep that in mind. Uh, something with the concepts as well. Just remember um, the previous video might be worth watching and putting up with the fact that it's long uh, to know about text and the uh, unique wording. Okay. So we'll end up with five LoRa's and that's how that's going to work. And um, that's actually really handy. The other thing is when it is actually running, you can um, you can hit back up now underneath this and it will do a backup. So it will usually uh, finish the one it's on. It'll do a backup and then it will continue to the next one. 
So at any point, if you're watching your images and say number three, oh, we'll skip three, uh, say number um, seven was really good and you're looking at that image and you want to back it up, hit back up. Uh, but it might back up on eight anyway, but it gives you an idea. Uh, we'll skip this. We talked about that in the previous one. We didn't need this. Do I know what this is now? Yes, I do. This is for fine tuning of a LoRa. So what you would do is I would put the LoRa that I trained in there, the uh, one with five, and then I would retrain. And the, the AI will be looking at the LoRa and go, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. These are the images I'm working from. I've got new images as well that I'm working from. Okay, uses the two together and creates a better LoRa than your original one. So you can fine tune your LoRa. I believe this uses more VRAM. I will have to test this out and uh, see how it goes. You guys can test it out and leave a comment below. It'd be fantastic. So that's it. So these settings, of course, I'll put on the cloud and you just hit run and just sit back and it will kick you out of LoRa. So let's have a looky here. This is our workspace. So these are the backups. I kicked out one at um, four and five. It might have been five and six. So we have one LoRa in there, only 218 megabyte. Uh, I don't know what all this is or how you would use it. If you guys know, you can leave in the comments below. But the only thing we care about is this LoRa that's created here. And that's what I ended up using. Samples. The previous settings that I was trying when it was broken, no changes in the image whatsoever. Didn't matter how many it did. Now we get changes. So this is Epoch 1 after 137 steps. Odd. Yeah. So this is Epoch 2 after 137 steps. So it's gone through the first time, gone through the second time. So we're on about 200 and, um, what's that, 240 something. Uh, no, sorry, 272 steppies. Uh, and we're starting to see, it's getting a bit of an understanding at least in some way of what I look like. Yeah, that's not bad. It's just pretty close. So, leave a comment on that. <laughs> okay, so coming over, we see Epoch 3. That is pretty damn close. A little bit rounder in the face, um, but uh, overall not bad. Body weight's probably accurate, to be honest. I'm not um, a skinny fellow anymore, unfortunately, with a neuromuscular condition. So that's not bad, not bad at all. And that's only, that's three hours in, using system RAM for the most part. And um, yeah, we're getting a pretty good result. It's washed out in that. But um, you got to remember, this is doing 100%. This is not a fine-tuned prompt. And then we get another one. It's not bad again. Skinnier in the body. Get another one here. It's not bad. You know, I mean, losing a bit of the chin. Keep in mind, it's only done one image for that epox. If we did half a dozen of them, we might actually find a better image. Come through again. So, a bit odd. Arm disappears. But we can actually see what we're getting. And this is the one I kicked it out on. So, it's saying that I kicked it out on uh, number five epox. You might be saying, look, Streamy, that's absolutely horrible. That's the uh, worst law I've ever seen. And uh, with more training, it's obviously going to be better. But um, you can use this. And let me prove that to you. So once we come into uh, Criter and we load up the LoRa, and I run it at... Um, I think this was running at uh, a weight of eight because uh, at the weight of one, it was using too much of the LoRa. So I was getting that green washed out uh, reflection on the glasses and stuff like that. So what we're doing here is we're loading up a, um, a fine tuned model to begin with, not the uh, base model. 
So we're giving it more advantage to give a better result. And then we're going to start fine tuning it. So we're going to, obviously we're going to adjust that weight and lower it. And we're lowering that weight because we want the model to shine through. So what we get is the, uh, the Laura coming through and then the model doing um, fine adjustments and yeah, I guess you could say like upscaling essentially and giving us a better image. So and that's what we're getting here. And of course I'm coming through and I'm like, okay, I want a background scene of uh, street instead, leather jacket. Um, I think I put in uh, stubble. I start describing skin textures and we, I am playing with those uh, weights as well for the Laura because sometimes when you go a little bit heavier on one thing, it will break another thing and you will need to adjust that Laura weight and we'll get onto that. So we come through that one. It's far away. I trained with close-ups. So because it's far away, I really can't um, have a good concept of what I would look like from a distance. So it's trying differently. Where if I come in closer to the monitor, I look different than I do at a distance. So keep that in mind. You want more data set. And this is just testing for me. Okay. So here... I'm, I'm wanting to really play with it, um, at high detail, skin textures. I want myself to have that Terminator look because I always wanted to do cosplay, but uh, neuromuscular condition, walking problems, not fun, uh, too short for it anyway. Um, now the saving is crossing back and forth because of the saving name. So we can ignore some of these again, we'll skip forward. You notice these ones got better. Uh, to the previous ones because I fine-tuned it. So we started talking about that lighting. Um, I believe the model was, um, one of the prompts was sunshine to get that reflection. And then once we remove that later on, we start to fix that up. So again, the Terminator. Terminator is hard because that's two lore is stacked. You need to find the balance. So the Terminator model of say Arnold Schwarzenegger's face and my face find a balance to mesh together where I get the Terminator's damage, but we get my resemblance on it. So that's a constant dance when you're playing with that. Again, decent, come through, fantastic. Uh, so again, the Terminator. Clearly, I guess Arnold Schwarzenegger has a longer face than mine. So we get that bit of a distance there. But overall, you still see that resemblance come through. Uh, again, I think this one here, um, we lost some of the weight on it. We find that balance and we come through and some of these aren't going to look right because we're playing back and forth and I'm like, okay, you know, do I want it dark? Uh, it's got the overall resemblance of me. I added age to it as well. Uh, I wanted to make sure I came across older looking and more harsh on the skin. So I found that really helped. But overall, to the SD 1.5, we can see a massive difference to the SD 1.5 Terminator that I did, which was um, rather gritty to this one, where it is far more refined and more perfect and just beautiful. And this is with a model which was trained in five hours with absolutely horrible conditions for the training data set of the images themselves and then obviously not even fine-tuned so and this is what we're getting so yeah we'll come forward so there's a bit of a play there with it didn't really look like me sort of got it there so we get some hit and misses on the way and it's once we uh, train up that uh, model a little bit more we'll end up getting a better fine tuning. So this one here, I think, come across the best. Um, taking the glasses off does change the model a bit, uh, but I think that's handy. A lot of people say, look, just train it with a, uh, a unique name and leave it there. Um, if you're wearing glasses, at the very least, have glasses in your prompt. That way, when you remove glasses, 
it removes it from your LoRa file, so you don't get the glasses on your image anymore, and the AI fills in that likeness. Because um, I think that's kind of important. Um, they're just things that I find is handy to have. Uh, the the simple texts of the prompt where they say, oh, you're just training a person, just have one name. If there's plants in that in the background and it's trained to recognize those plants, when you remove plants or you put plants in the negative, then it knows it's in the LoRa model and it goes, okay, I'm ignoring that part of the LoRa. So I disagree from what I've seen when I've done 1.5 models with that just have a name. I think that's really important to know. Okay, there it is. That's one trainer. Um, and I will leave that JSON on my uh, cloud. And I will leave a link. It'll probably come up just after the video because usually I upload the video and then I'll be in the lounge room where it's more comfortable and um, go through and edit that later. So um, that's why some of the links don't appear straight away. Um, it's more got to do with my body than sitting here and doing everything, which is rather painful. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that JSON. Uh, I would love to know if you're getting the CUDA error or the CUDEN error. CUDEN talks to the CUDA and then uses your graphics card. Mine's running slow because of that reason. Uh, if you're not getting that, I'd love to know what Python you're running and what version of the uh, NVIDIA toolkit you're running. Leave that in the comments below or to the left or the right, wherever they may be. Because um, uh, I'd like to fix that because then obviously it will run faster. I will play with the settings. The Atom is incredibly VRAM hungry, so that does play a big difference with time. But at the same time, it's one of the more reliable um, ways of creating a LoRa and it had the better images, which is why I think they have it as the default in there because it's like a, a almost guaranteed, doesn't matter what you're running, it's going to run, it's just going to be slow. So uh, something to keep in mind, and I'll go through and we'll work those settings out. If you're running this, leave your settings configurations below, leave a link to your settings if you've got the JSON, or you can open up the JSON, copy the text from it, paste that below, then we can copy that, put it into a text, rename it JSON, get the settings. That way we can test it out and everyone can um, play with it and um, get the best combinations and work this out for us lower end users. Now, of course, I'm running it on a RTX 3068 gig, which I'm just using in the lounge room to run it. And uh, yeah, there's an RTX 3050 user uh, with a 6 gig uh, on Civit AI using, uh, making SDXLs. I did reach out to them. Um, turns out they're not using Windows, they're using Linux. And Windows has a heavy GUI, graphic user interface. And even when it's not running, where it's in the background, it's still hogging up a chunk of VRAM, which um, sucks a bit. So that's the way they found around it. But it doesn't mean you can't run this with that because it will fall back to your system memory. You will just have that longer wait time. But as I said, go to bed, wake up, let it run. Um, go to school, let it run, whatever you're doing. Now, can you run it on AMD? I'm seeing a bunch of people are running this on AMDs. I don't know the configurations and I don't know the settings and I don't know the times. So if you're running on, on an AMD, you can leave a comment below. GTX users, it seems like um, the GTX users like this system here, the uh, 1070, they are running the SD 1.5s on it and they're getting them done in 30 minutes with large data sets. So it may vary depending on your um, type of uh, GTX that you're actually running. But it's interesting to know that you can run SD, uh, SD 1.5s on it. So uh, if you've got the older one, give that a try and see how that goes. Uh, yeah, don't forget to, of course, don't know why that's dinging. Like, subscribe, and get the bell on for notifications. And of course, I will see you in the next stream table this video.
Thank you for watching my video and sticking around to the end. If you like my videos, it really help me out if you could like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm to push my videos out there to more viewers, which in turn helps me and helps everyone. So thank you for watching my video and hanging around to the end, and I will see you in the next video.